There is no reason to reiterate that Skyrim is a truly immense game. It would take hundreds of hours to search its game map and find all the little secrets and easter eggs it offers. However, the community and numerous YouTubers that dedicated their careers on finding them have made discovering truly new information about the game a rare commodity valued beyond the price of gold. This list that we made is composed from more than half truly new facts. The other part is some trivia I thought you would like. For those who want truly novel facts, this is a perfect fix. Hope you'll enjoy it. <laughs> what better way to start that at the beginning of the game? Excuse the gloom, but none may know of this meeting. Okay, maybe not the beginning beginning. After Alduin attacks and destroys the fort of Helgen, you begin your run through the debris dodging the incoming attacks. A small detail you might miss is this scoundrel here. Present at Helgen is a little chap with the name of Humming. He is terrified and searches for a place to hide. Now, after this, you can go on your merry adventure forgetting all about the encounter. But if you really pay close attention and have a keen eye, you can actually find Hemming again during your playthrough. Apparently, after Helgen he remained an orphan, but fortunate enough, if I can really say this, his grandfather Froki is still alive and he took the little Hemming in after the massacre at the fort. I was really glad that the developers had a bit of compassion and saved the kid. Staying on the subject of Froki, if you are running a mage build, his shack should be the first place to run after you begin your game. The shack can be found in the south of Skyrim by traveling west from Riften. Now you might be questioning, why come here? Is Froki a great mage that will impart you the arts of the arcane? Well, not so much. But the reason you need to travel here is because just lying in the open outside his shack on a tree stump, you can find the rare item called the diadem of the savant. This item, unlike the robes you can purchase in the game that reduce the cost of just one school of magic, has the rare enchantment of reducing the cost of all the schools of magic. I repeat, all the schools of magic. So if you are a mage, hurry here and take advantage of this most powerful enchantment. Going forward, unlike the previous facts that you might have heard about, this fact is something I am 100% sure you never heard of. It is a useless fact, but a new fact nonetheless. And after 12 years since the release of this game that has a community that has scrutinized every corner of Skyrim, the fact that it is novel has value all in itself. Now get ready. The pies in the city of Winterhold lie on the floor. Bam! You did not expect that. Let me explain. While conducting the greatest heist that Skyrim ever saw by stealing every item in the city of Windhelm, link in the description below, we found out that in this city the apple pies you can find in the NPC houses are being kept on the floor, just under the table. I don't know if this is a bug, that's a bug, or a developer that just could not be bothered that day. But if you go in the white file, you can find the first pie under the table on the first floor. The next culprit can be found in the kitchen of Candleheart Hall, the inn of the city. In the kitchen under the table on the right, just as you enter the room. And lastly, for our mischievous spies, you can find the last one in the harbor, in the Argonian assemblage, under the table on the opposite side of the room as you enter. See? See, 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 see? I wasn't talking bullshit. Pies? Yeah, that's a bug. Are on the floor. This really got me scratching my head. It is a lazy developer, a code to the secret of life, or a misunderstood easter egg. I guess this will always stay a mystery. If that fact blowed your mind, you really need to subscribe. For our number 4, we remain in the cold city of Windhelm. Again, this is a new fact that we found out during our heist. We tried it with three characters in three separate playthroughs, both on PC and console, and it was the same every time. It seems like a pattern of one lazy developer working on the city emerges. Let me go into more details. Just as you enter the city of old, you run past these two guards standing by the front gate. 
Nothing inconspicuous here, just two guards doing their duties and protecting the city. But the truth reveals itself when you look under the shallow surface. If your character is skilled enough in pickpocket and has the perfect touch perk, you can pickpocket the uniform off of the guards keeping vigil. Doing that, you will find an amazing truth. The guards are either twins or someone just copy-pasted the same NPC. This is uh, Jimmy Billy Bob and this is uh, Jimmy Billy Ray. See? Either the same guy or twins. Now this might also have a deeper meaning, but I really doubt that. Hmm... This video is turning into a Windhelm fact video if we continue like this. But just indulge me with two more facts, then I will return to the broader region of Skyrim. Next on our list, I want to talk about the strange sleeping habits of the people of Windhelm. Now, if you travel throughout Skyrim cities and unlawfully enter the houses of NPCs at night, you would normally find that everywhere you go, spouses share a bed, as they would normally do. There is also the incestuous relationship in the house of the clan Battleborn in the city of Whiterun, but that is a whole discussion all on its own. Returning to Windhelm and performing the same illegal action snooping around NPC's properties at night, you will find something peculiar. In the whole city, and I mean the whole big city, there are only two couples that share a bed and sleep together. The first couple is found in the Candleheart Hall, the inn of the city. The couple is composed of Susanna the Wicked and her man Niels. But what I want to address is the identity of the second couple. They can be found in the Temple of Talos of all places. It is composed of the priests Jora and Lordheim. She likes gourmet food, Jora. You like to spice things up in bed with a little bit of cheese, right? Uh, what are you talking about? She likes to eat cheese. In bed? Yes, while they Humpty Dumpty. The fact that they are together is even shown if you kill either of them. In case you kill Jora, the priest Lorheim will send a group of three bandits after you in order to revenge her murder. It seems that even in a temple named after Talos, these two priests engage from time to time in a little bit of Dibela worshipping, if you get my drift. For our number 6, we have a last tidbit about Windhelm. This is a more well-known fact, so I won't dwell on it. But I'll mention it in case some people did not hear about this. Windhelm has a wall that bleeds. You heard that right. A wall that bleeds. If you take a right just after you exit Ulfric's residence, you will find a passage that leads under the Aretino's house. However, it is the passage itself we are interested in. Just before turning the corner that leads to the stone bridge, pull out your sword and start hitting the wall. You will soon discover that for some reason, beyond human comprehension, this wall right here bleeds. This wall will spill blood every time you yank your sword at it. Now for this one, I really have no explanation. For our lucky number 7, we have a change in scenery and move our location to the city of Whiterun. We found this out after the heist in Whiterun while doing the statistics on everything we could steal from the city. If you are interested in statistics and the living habits of the citizen of Whiterun, you should check that video out. Some people say it's boring, but I disagree. It's a banger. But returning to the point, while cataloging the items stolen, I found out that there is a unique item in Arcadia's cauldron. Well. Unique is a long stretch, because this item can be found all over the game, but in regards to the city of Whiterun, this is the only one of its kind that can be found. I am of course talking about a bottle of wine without a basket on the bottom. Now before smashing the dislike button and leaving the video, hear me out a bit. I bring this up because unlike all the other cities where you can find both varieties of bottles, with and without baskets, and lots of them, in Whiterun you can only find one and just one. This is statistically very unlikely. I am scratching my head about the reason why, but my theory is that Whiterun was developed before the other cities when all the assets were not yet created. And before lunch, a dev came back to check on everything and left his touch with this particularly unique, really common item as his signature move. What is your theory regarding the presence of this highly unusual bottle? Comment down below and share your thoughts about this Sherlock Holmes great mystery. So if you want us to make just another list like this, please let us know in the comments. We have more unheard of facts about this wonderful game. Stop right there, criminal scum! If you like this video, make sure to check this other one. It's a banger.